a quick overview of what's new in Keyboard Maestro 8. There's a new assistance window which can help you resolve problems with macros not executing or executing unexpectedly, as well as integrated wiki searching in the help menu. The editor includes basic touch bar support, including the new run button to trigger the current macro. Text fields now include an indicator badge to determine whether they are token, calculation or variable fields. You can hide disabled groups to reduce clutter in the macro groups column. Some common mistakes are detected in the editor with a new warning system. The Keyboard Maestro 8 editor includes full Apple Script support for creating and modifying macro groups, macros and actions. This opens up a whole new category of metaprogramming. You can select a set of actions and ungroup them in any of the container actions, and you can drag macro groups, macros and files into macros to create actions. A new option allows you to control the text size in the editor and switches. There are insert by name commands for tokens, functions and variables, and all the insert by name commands use machine learning to remember what items you selected in the past and guess at what you're likely to want in the future. The trigger macro by name action also uses the same machine learning system. Keyboard Maestro 8 extends the MIDI support to allow packets to trigger macros and let you send more kinds of MIDI packets. This lets you use controllers like Touch OSC as well as more physical controllers with knobs and dials. There are a bunch of new triggers including gestures, idle triggers and triggering when the audio output device changes, in particular when you plug in or remove the headphones. You can now trigger a macro using our remote server, allowing you to use services like healthchecks.io or other network services to trigger macros. And there's a new cron trigger that lets you trigger macros based on calendar times and days, such as noon on the last Friday of the month. The clipboard switcher got a makeover and includes a lot of extra information, such as image sizes, as well as a new clipboard filter system that lets you write macros that can operate on selected clipboards. You can now exclude certain applications from the clipboard history system to avoid recording sensitive or large clipboards. There are a variety of new input actions, including asking for files or folders, prompting for a selection from a list from the touch bar or from a set of macros. Browser actions can now target the most recently front Safari or Chrome browser and can use XPath to select web page items. You can also now download images or text from the web directly and send SMS or iMessages. The engine now supports macro, local and instance local variables, which allows you to more easily control multiple simultaneous macros and introduces dictionaries, hash tables that can store more structured information. And then there's a plethora of new functions, tokens, conditions and collections, and a bunch of minor tweaks, improvements and fixes. Hopefully, something for everyone.